to former Microsoft Chief Operating Officer Bob Herbold. Bob, very good to have you. Thanks for coming. Hi, Neil. What do you make of that? I know the market giveth and taketh, and we shouldn't, especially with, when it comes to technology, um, you know, get too hyperventilating about this. The fact of the matter is that from Apple to your old home, Microsoft, and all, they're up appreciably uh, over the past year. Um, but people are getting antsy. Should they be? Well, fundamentally, I don't think so, at least in the case of Microsoft and, uh, and Apple and uh, uh, Amazon. They have really solid business models, and you're going to see hiccups here and there, and they'll be driven by some of these forces that are external to the, uh, to the sector completely. Uh, but by and large, they're very healthy businesses. Now, in the case of Facebook uh, and in the case of Google, uh, you got a different scene there because uh, security, personal security, privacy is a big issue. And I think you're going to continue to see heavy pressure on those stocks simply because the fundamental business model is up for grabs. It's up for question in regard to the privacy issue. I'm wondering, too, uh, you know, the, the, the wagons are circling for technology companies. You have the, the momentum crowd that feels all right. They had run up too much. There's also the, the privacy crowd that's saying, you know, we got to look at a couple of these guys. Um, that wouldn't affect Apple, to your point, but some of the others. Uh, and others just saying, you know what, it's a rotation, a natural rotation out of what had been a market leader. We'll look for other leaders. But no matter how you slice it, the, the argument is it's not going to be a good environment for technology because it had been such a good environment. What, what, what do you think? Well, you know, Neil, we've been feeling that way for about 20 years now, and uh, new You're bright exactly ideas. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. <laughs> you know, new ideas come along. I think what's going on with the cloud and uh, Microsoft and Amazon in particular, uh, those businesses are really sound, uh, and uh, the customer is winning as they move uh, these applications to the cloud so they don't have to have their own data centers. and. So they, th those businesses are fundamentally very, very good shape. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You're going to see variations. I mean, this trade flap with China is out of hand. It's getting childish almost in terms of uh, how long it has gone on. They should just get in a room, close the door, no media, get it ironed out. Uh, watch out for the fact that the Chinese, they do need to save face. So we're going to have to give in on a few things. But. By and large, we need to get this behind us. Uh, we've argued enough. Uh, let's uh, resolve it. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's bothering people a lot, and I think it affects the market. I think also the Fed ought to think about slowing down. Uh, uh, we need to stabilize a bit. You're seeing a lot of criticism on the speed. No, I, I was talking to a, a Fed watch who said just that, uh, Bob, saying that, you know, the Fed Reserve is, is perfectly justified. I'm paraphrasing here. I hope I've got the gist of his comments right. It's certainly right to find a new equilibrium. It can't be 0% interest rates, but nor should it be the historical norm of 5% for the overnight bank lending rate of Fed funds, maybe right. 3 3.5%, who knows. Uh, but, but is there a risk here the Federal Reserve is overdoing it? That's what the president has alleged, and that, you know, Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, is overdoing it and, and, and risking the whole market and recovery with it. Well, I happen to think so, and I, I, I think that there's no reason why you can't let your foot off that accelerator for a bit and, uh, and let things uh, stabilize. I also think that, Neil, we need to watch out for the fact that these markets now are driven by algorithms, okay? And so right. when you start to see a, a small decline, those algorithms that have no humans involved, the algorithms say, I better jump ahead of that and, and, uh, and start selling now because it's going to go down further. And they tend to drive it down. So, you know, declines that used to be 100 points now are 450 points simply because, uh, uh, not simply, you know, not exclusively, but a big factor are the fact that algorithms are, are running a lot of this. Yeah, it doesn't take much. And the higher the numbers go, 450 points might seem like a big deal, and it is, uh, but it's certainly not the same, let's say, what we had in October of 87 when we crashed and fell 500 points right. and it was a quarter of the Dow's value. It's very different now. This is about one and three quarters percent of the Dow. Um, for technology in general and American leadership in that, in that field, um, what are your thoughts? Well, I think we continue to be strong, but the, the big risk is talent, frankly. Uh, what's happening in China is they're pouring a ton of money into these massive research centers. Secondly, they've significantly strengthened their universities. So today, if you rank the top 10 engineering schools in the world, such as U.S. News and World Report just did, 
you get five of them basically in Asia, which is a real surprise compared to 10 years ago. So the schools are good. The government is pouring a lot of money. And what's happening in the U.S. is we're actually telling these kids who are getting master's degrees and PhDs in computer science and engineering, we're saying to them, look, uh, we don't necessarily want you around, all right? That's the signal that we're sending them. It's absolutely the wrong signal. They've gotten caught up in this immigration flap, which is, again, an issue that just keeps, you know, being kicked around. And so what's happening is, in 2011, 45 percent of graduates coming from Asia would go back home. Today, that number is 80 percent. Mm. They're going back home to good jobs and to environments that, uh, that welcome them, because they know that long term, their military and their industry is dependent on great technology. Yeah, and we'd rather have them than anyone else. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, Bob, thank you very, very much. Very good, Neil. Take care.